Although the slaves at North were free in the 18th century, they still didn't have the right to vote. They couldn't hold public employment or be skilled workers. Children can only go to black schools, and they even got forced to sit in black-only seats at public transportation. Moreover, due to the economic development of cotton in the South, slavery was generally accepted. Even some of the entire factory were black workers, but the mechanical tools they invented could not be patented. In 1830. The activities of blacks were restricted in the South. They were required to carry ID cards when they went out. They were not allowed to gather. They were not allowed to carry weapons, and they were not allowed to testify against in the blacks. In 1850s, more and more slavery movement occurred in the North. The publication of Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. Brought the northern anti-slavery sentiment to the peak. It mainly described the dark side of slavery and the tragic endings of slaves. It pointed out the mistakes of slavery, then became one of the most popular stage plays in the North. Soon after, a series of disputes over slavery, like bleeding Kansas in 1854, the presidential election in 1856. Dred Scott v. Sanford case in 1857, the Lincoln Douglas debates of 1858, all caused the relationship between North and South more tense. The Bleeding Kansas, also known as the Bloody Kansas, it was a conflict of slavery between 1854 to 1858. The conflict took place in the Unknown Kansas Territory and the neighboring Missouri. As the party to the north and the south supported and opposed slavery, South to gain control of Kansas territory to determine whether Kansas would join the Federation as a slave state or free state. This conflict had an important impact on political situation in Central United States at the time and the American Civil War. After the passage of Kansas Nebraska Act in 1854, thousands of Northern people and Southern people came to the newly established Kansas Territory. Some of these settlers simply wished to open new lands for a settlement now, but many others began to vote for or against slavery. The Kansas Nebraska Act allows people living in Kansas Territory to decide for themselves whether to allow slavery. This legislation overturned the previous Missouri Compromise, which announced Kansas freedom from slavery. Some Southern people want to make Kansas a slave state, with a view of to reducing North Korea's advantage in the U.S. statnet. Southerners believe that they can prevent the North from resisting or ending slavery if they at least regain the number of senators in the U.S. Senate. Many Northerners intend to prevent slavery at all costs. The government's approval of the Kansas-Nebraska Act has helped to create the Republican Party, which is centered on the North and is committed to preventing expansion of slavery. From the territorial politics and government perspective, long before the official civil war began, the Kansasian people turmoil for seven years. On the issue of slavery was real life on Kansas territory. Election fraud is widespread. Efforts to ratify or reject Pacific constitutions have also caused controversy. The location of the capital was changed several times. Pawnee is the capital, but the territorial legislature met there for only six days before moving to the Shawnee Indian Mission. Before Kansas became a state. There were four different constitutions. The Lake Compton Constitution includes provision that allows slavery. At some point, the two governments operated in Kansas. Proponents of slavery established the government according to the Compton's federal guidelines. Those who opposed slavery claimed to have control in Topeka. In just six years, Kansas has only ten governors or acting governors. Settlers in Kansas must deal with these disputes when building homes, farms, and businesses. 
By 1855, Kansas usually had two competing governments, which become violent the following year when an armed force supporting slavery burned down the free soil town of Lawrence, Kansas. Until May 21, 1856, there was subjective violence in the territory of total slavery, and poor slavery attacked the Dutch Lawrence, the capital of free soil. This is a coordinated attack on a southernest town. This caused a lot of damage, and pro slaves burned down many buildings, including hotel and newspaper buildings. Okay. On May 24, 1856, in retaliation, a small group of abolitionists led by John Brown attacked and killed five pro slave settlers known as Portobi, the Tommy Massacre. In May 1856, enthusiastic abolitionist John Brown and his followers retaliated by executing several pro-slave men in Potomac Creek, Kansas. The violence even spread to the U.S. South Capitol. In May 1856, a congressman from South Carolina violently attacked a Massachusetts senator in the heat remark about slavery and the revolt in Kansas. The violence continued until 1858, and an estimated 200 people were killed in essentially a small civil war. John Brown was an American abolitionist. Brown advocated the use of armed insurrection to overthrow the institution of slavery in the United States. He first gained national attention when he led a small group of volunteers during the bleeding Kansas crisis of 1956. He was dissatisfied with the pacifism of the organized abolitionist movement. He said, these men are all talk. What we need is action. John Brown was born May 9, 1800 in Toronto, Connecticut. In 1820, Brown married Pant Lusk. Their first child, John Jr., was born 13 months later. In 1825, looking for a safer location for fugitive slaves. Brown and his family moved to New Richmond, Pennsylvania, where he brought 200 acres of land. He built a secret room to hide the escaped slaves. In 1831, one of his sons died, Brown became ill, and his business began to suffer living him with their debt. In the summer of 1832, after the death of the newborn son, his wife then told dad, leaving him with children John Jr., Jason, Irvin, and Ruth. The other three of their children did not survive to adulthood. On June 14, 1833, Brown married 16 years old Marion Day, originally from Washington County, New York. They eventually had 13 children. The deaths of those who live on John Brown were Simon, Annie, Sarah, and Ellen. In 1836, Brown moved his family to the Franklin Mill, Ohio. There, he borrowed money in the area to buy land, build, and operate a tannery. He suffered huge financial loss in the economy crisis in 1839. After the heavy borrowing trend in Ohio, many businessmen like Brown trusted too much in credit and public debt and paid it very heavily. In one episode of property loss, Brown was detained when he attempted to remain ownership of the farm by occupying it against claim by the new owner. In 1837, in response to the murder of Ilya Parrish Lovejoy, Brown's will public, he said, Here, before God, in the presence of this witness, from this time, I consecrate my life to the destruction of slavery. On May 21st of 1856, Pro-slavery activities led by Samuel Jefferson Jones 
a Douglas County Sheriff attack and ransacked Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas was founded by anti slavery chillers from Massachusetts who were hoping to make Kansas a free state. On May 24, 1856, John Brown, who was an anti slavery man, was stimulated by the incident of sacking of Lawrence. So he led many abolitionists, including five of his sons and three others, associated killing five pro slavery shelters in Potawatomi Creek, Franklin County, Kansas. Before three days ago, Brown and the Potawatomi Company, which was an informal militia group, met to Lawrence to protect the town from the destruction of the pro slavery men. They joined with the similar local company from the anti slavery town of Osawatomi. However, they soon received the news that they were already too late to prevent the attack. Brown decided to revenge on his pro slavery neighbors. Brown and his five sons used guns and swords to murder James Doyle and his sons. After Brown crossed to the south bend of the Great at Dutch Henry's Ford and went into the house of James Harris, he questioned them about their viewpoints of the slavery and whether they participated in the attack on Lawrence. William Sherman was killed because his answer did not satisfy Brown. In the end, his body was left in the creek. June 2, 1856, Henry Clay Pitt, a captain who guided the pro slavery militia, was ordered to go to the west and found out John Brown and his sons who suspected of killing others. Henry Clay Pitt encamped at Black Jack Springs, a popular campsite on the Santa Fe Trail in southeast Douglas County, Kansas. This was the place that Henry Clay Pitt was attacked by a Free State Militia. And the leader of the Free State Militia was an abolitionist, John Brown. The reason for John Brown's sneak attack was because of his sons. Pet's men found Brown's two sons working on their farm, so Pet's men arrested them and tied them to hardcore. Other free state men were also arrested and some of the cabins were burned. During the battle, 100 soldiers shooting each other for almost five hours, and both of them fighting for the cover behind the creek embankment on different branches of Captain's Creek. At the end of the battle, Pet's ammunition was exhausted, and at the same time, he was afraid that the reinforcement of Free State Militia was rushed from Lawrence. In order to postpone the time, he showed the truth back to John Brown. However, most of the people finally abandoned Pate, so he surrendered to John Brown, and he and 22 of his followers were arrested and extorted the ransom. Because John Brown admired Pate, who fights fiercely with him. He decided to make a protocol with Pitt. He asked Pitt to liberate both of his sons, and he would release the rest of the captives and Pitt himself. And this was the denouement of the Battle of Blackjack. The Battle of Blackjack was the first um, conflict between pro-slavery and anti-slavery and both of them show the power and determination in this battle. After three years, John Brown led 80 people to occupy the Federal Armory at Harper Ferry, Virginia, which is known as the Rebellion of John Brown. Some of the people believe that the Battle of Black Jack was an omen of the Rebellion of John Brown. But most of the people consider this this battle of the 
was the beginning of the American Civil War. In 1859, in order to invoke the slave uprisings in each slave continent, John Brown officially launched an armed uprising after a series of preparations. On the night of October 16th, Brown and his three sons led a rebel team composed of 13 whites and 5 blacks to the Harper Ferry in Virginia and launched an armed road. After a short battle, they quickly occupied the federal government's arsenal and liberated black slaves near the occupied area. By dawn, panicked slave owners of plantation quickly mobilized the army and surrounded the arsenal, then launched an attack on the insurgents. Therefore, a fierce fight between two sides occurred in the area of federal armory. After two dead bloody battle, most of the insurgents died. Brown's two sons also died during the fierce battle. In the end, Brown and his last four insurgents were captured by the federal government. In December of 1859, John Brown was sentenced to death. Before his death, his last words were, I, John Brown, and now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty then can never be purged away but with blood. John Brown's life was full of ups and downs. Although he was sentenced to death in front of everyone, he achieved his goal at the end, which was to awaken the self-awareness of slaves and let them know that they had the right to be treated equally. Historically, the bloody Kansas incident has affected many innocent citizens. It has caused turmoil in Congress and triggered bloodshed of all sides. However, without this incident, Kansas will not be unified and we believe that racial discrimination will only be more serious than it is today. The occurrence of historical events has enabled us to learn from them, and it has also shaped us now. The occurrence of bloody Kansas had made us realize the value of freedom and has made the United States more prosperous.